thank you for tuning in to this video. I am here at Seraphim Holistics. We are doing a seven weeks of wellness series and we have been viewing this docu-series on the sacred plant, Healing Secrets Examined. And today's topics are cancer and cannabis, cannabis for cancer. And so I have a couple of my friends here that have come here to share their stories of hope with you. This is Amy Rabb, and Amy is a award-winning professional photographer. She is an author, she's an adventurer, she's often taking trips out of state. She is a dear friend of mine. She's also a mother, she's a wife, and an advocate for patients using cannabis for cancer. Amy, it's just a beautiful opportunity to have you here in person to share with our friends and thank you for, for driving out. And I would love for you to introduce um, your journal. I'm like, thank you, Rita. <laughs> so I am a recent breast cancer survivor. And when I was diagnosed with cancer, I immediately got certified for medical marijuana. But I found that I was too sick to figure out what worked for me when I went to a dispensary. I loved that there was an opportunity to learn about cannabis and and how miraculous it is in with the endocannabinoid system and, and all this stuff, but I was just too sick and I couldn't deal with it. I was too sick. Um, and so I tried to find a journal where I could at least take some notes on what I was buying and um, how it was making me feel, but I couldn't find a good cannabis journal. So I decided to create one myself. And so this is my journal and it's full of my photographs. Most of them were taken, um, like Rita said, in my adventures, my recent adventures of my cancer-free life. Um, but actually a lot of them were taken in my own backyard while I was sick or during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this is just um, nature. It's all nature photography and animals and um, just beautiful scenery that, that I believe cannabis will make you um, aware of more than when you're suffering from pain mm -hmm. or scrolling, doom scrolling on Instagram. <laughs> yes. um, so my, my journal has everything you need to know to get started. Everything, um, the, the, the minimum amount you need to know to get started if you want to learn about cannabis. Um, the endocannabinoid system, THC, CBD, a terpene profile, and uh, sativa versus indica, dosing, and set and setting. These are all the basics you need to know to get started. And then the book is interspersed with these two pages, very simple. Um, you just document where and when you bought the product, who was your bud tender, um, and a few things here to document. And then you can actually, I'll show you um, the book that, that I use. Um, in this space here, you put the label from your product so that you can see what the terpene profile is. And you can make notes on it while you're learning about it. And then when you come back to the dispensary and you want to buy King Stash again, and they're out of it because it's a plant. It's not, it's not a made in a factory. Um, they can, you can do the research and figure out what the percentages of the terpenes are that the highest percentages of the terpenes in King Stash and how they, that combination works for you. And then you can search for other products through that terpene profile. Hmm. Um, so I, I hope that, um, a lot of people, uh, the cannabis curious, a lot of people are, are afraid, um, to kind of delve into cannabis, but my book, I think will help people, um, through their journey of learning and discovering and being mindful. Um, I spent during cancer and COVID and then I had shingles after COVID, oh <laughs> a year ago I had shingles. I sat outside with my book and my tea and my cannabis and um, just, it really brought me in touch with my higher self. And and I believe it's a guide that, that everybody needs. And you need to document 
all of your meds when you're starting a new regimen or you have surgery, you have to absolutely have to have a book where you document your meds. And this book is that, and it's so much more. You said about my book that um, it when you look back on the whole book, it made you realize how far you had come. Yes. And it made you feel so good. Yes. To see and, your progress. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Progress is difficult if we're struggling and if we're having a hard time. Sometimes it's... um. You know, it's not always easy to see where we are and how far we've come, mm -hmm. right? So this is actually beautiful because it, it kind of leads right into Heather's story. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce you to Heather. Um, and she's going to share a little bit uh, more of what she does and how she brings healing uh, to the world for us and for you. Um, so he this is Heather Landry. And Heather owns H3X, Heather's Healing Haven. Heather is a Reiki practitioner, and she's been practicing for three years. She is hand, she does hands-on Reiki and energy work. She is a wellness life pain coach. She is an intuitive healer, a jewelry maker, and she infuses her products with Reiki. She's actually done also Reiki with cancer patients and animals. So it's a very... A complimentary therapy, the U.S. Pain Foundation actually recommends um, Reiki as one of their complimentary therapies for pain. And so I'm so happy to have Heather here sharing her high vibes with us and all of the beautiful Reiki-infused um, products that she has. But her story is what really inspired me and her friendship has been a gift to me over the years. And so I just want to introduce Heather. And she's going to share a little bit of her story of hope and how she found her hope again. Yeah, thank thanks you so much for having me here, Rita, and thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather. Um, so I am a Reiki practitioner, and roughly about three years ago, I was sitting in my living room, and I was 223 pounds, and I couldn't walk, and I've dealt with chronic pain for over 20 years, but this had brought me to a really low point and I couldn't move, couldn't walk. Um, I found medical cannabis and I also found Reiki and I was able to, utilizing different things like breath work, meditation, Reiki, movement, um, changing my mindset, able to not only dance off the weight and lose the weight, but to change my mindset, my perspective, to change my energy, to let go of so many things and invite in healing and wellness. Um, and to be able to create really cool products and infuse all of that with love, with healing intentions, with Reiki, and be able to provide that for others is a beautiful experience. I love to be able to create and to share. Um, the jewelry started out just to be able to talk to people about Reiki and what I do. Um, some people don't really understand the, the energy medicine, the Reiki of it, so it was just kind of a way to talk to others. And the, uh, the other things that I'm doing now, the soaps, the salts, the, the, the paintings, everything is just kind of started from that one thing. But learning how to manage my energy and to breathe and to meditate and to let go, um, to invite in the universal healing that's already there, right? To use it as a way to have therapy, whether I include it with my dance, whether I include it with my meditation, whether I'm just utilizing it, you know, in the morning, at night, I can utilize Reiki whenever. I can put it in my food. I can put it, I can use it in my relationships. Reiki, mm -hmm. I can use in absolutely everything that I do in my life. And I love and appreciate that because mm -hmm. I can bring that to other people. I like bringing aligned healing to people. I like showing them that they can be more um, than just their pain. You can be more than just your physical pain, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual pain, any pain. Um, you have the ability to be more than just your pain. Reiki is a way to, to help you get in touch with that, but it's just the beginning. It kind of gets you in touch with yourself. So if you're interested in that or anything of what I have, be loving to, to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We're very blessed to have 
these amazing ladies and these stories of hope. What are the options, um, you know? Um, does cannabis kill cancer? And if it does, at what dose? Do we know? So after watching the documentary, there's a few facts that we can share with you. Um, GW Pharmaceuticals actually did a double blind study. And if you know this, this, you know, you know, this is the gold standard in the medical field. And the study was done with geoblastoma patients and cannabis users. And they found that 40% of these patients increased in longevity with a one-to-one -one ratio of adding a cannabis regimen to their um, regimen. And that's miraculous. A 40% increase in longevity is a true miracle. And so what else have we found and learned? Well, there was also some clinical studies and trials done. And there was a clinical trial with melanoma. And again, a one-to-one -one ratio of cannabinoids, THC and CBD actually reduced tumors. Um, a third fact that we will cover is another clinical trial. It was men with bladder cancer and this was done, a large study actually done in California. Um, Dr. Sulak reported that 45% decrease their rates of their cancer. So I can't sit here and say, yes, cannabis kills cancer. But what we can say is that cannabis kills cancer cells in small animals in tissue culture. And that's a fact. And we just thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening and for caring for others and for yourself. Um, if you're looking for us here at the center, we will have all the links listed below. I'm also going to include contact links for Amy and Heather. So you can about, reach out to them. You know, giving options and letting you make choices for yourself. Um, so we'll see you on the next video.